has sold more than four million copies worldwide. Last fall, her latest album, American Tune, became her third straight CD to reach the top of the charts in England. Her breakthrough single, Songbird, headlines the soundtrack of Hugh Grant's latest movie, Love Actually. And her rendition of Over the Rainbow is the most requested song in the history of the BBC. About the same thing happened when our Nightline colleague Dave Marish first told Eva Cassidy's story in 2001. Never before and never since has Nightline received so many requests to tell one story again. Here it is. Um, we were seated next to each other, luckily. No place, Ever since I could remember her, she loved jazz and blues. Oh, jazz, blues, folk, rock, and gospel were all major sources of Eva Cassidy's repertoire. But so were classic laments and ballads from American popular music. Rainbow just was one of our favorites. When I say our, I mean her groupies that always followed her. in a country an ocean away from her home, that over the rainbow moved Eva Cassidy from obscurity to the spotlight. A friend of mine uh, brought the record to me in the office. Paul Walters is a producer for a popular morning show on the BBC's Radio 2. I thought, oh, fine, OK, put it in the pile. I'll get to it later. And he said, no, I'd like you to listen to it now. So I had to listen to it, and I was absolutely stunned. Suddenly, there was a song that and a voice that stood out a million miles above all the rest stopped me in my tracks. I thought, I've got to play this. We've got to have this in the program. It's the wonderful Eva Cassidy, and uh, old Paulie Walters gets a great deal of the credit for discovering her enormous talent. And you... Terry Wogan is Radio 2's morning star. He played Eva Cassidy's recording of Over the Rainbow unheard.
like a lot of people in this country, I think, through the Terry Wogan show on Radio 2. The best in pop and rock from the last... Mark Hagen produces BBC Television's weekly music show, Top of the Pops 2. Heard the record, loved it, got the record. Thought this would be a fabulous person to, to show on television. Unfortunately, Hagen thought there is no videotape of Eva. Until almost two years later, he found and broadcast this homemade video of Eva singing over the rainbow at Washington's Blues Alley. We put it on the program on the 13th of December, I think it was, in 2000. And as soon as the program came off air, the switchboard was jammed with it. And this went on and on and on. I should show it again. So, I put it on top of the Pops 2 again. The same reaction again, but even more so. Um, and that's still going on today. This spring, Eva Cassidy's CD, Songbird, with Over the Rainbow on it, was the number one selling popular album in the United Kingdom. For several weeks, Eva had as many as five CDs listed in the British Top 150 for pop albums an achievement of Beatles or Rolling Stones proportions. As her rediscovery has bounced back to the American side of the Atlantic, CD sales here have taken off. Songbird has passed 200,000, and Eva's total U.S. CD sales are close to half a million. She was afraid then what fame would do to her. She was really kind of afraid of it. And I have to kind of laugh, because this is the way I think Eva would have loved it. Everybody else does the talking for her. All she does is sing. This is ABC News Nightline, brought to you by Viagra. I know a little something about making good moves. So if you're thinking about Viagra, one of the best moves you can make is a pit stop to see your doctor. Ready to ask your doctor about Viagra for the first time? Find out if a free sample is right for you. Make your move. It's true. E see Channel 2 and the Georgia Lottery celebrating a decade of hope. She's cooking, y'all. Cooking with the big gas flame. Hey! Thank you, Mary. It's true. Eva was afraid to get on stage. And she knew she needed to improve her ability, her shyness, her assertiveness, her stage presence. And she knew she needed to do some solo gigs. Eva was soon singing regularly in small clubs, thinking about recording, which is what took her to the studio run by Chris Biondo. And even there, Eva was at first mic shy. She uh, wouldn't come in. And uh, she just kind of stood in the shadows, and I thought there was something wrong with her, that she wasn't, you know, a singer, just somebody who was coming by to, you know, try to sing. And uh, she went in and just blew me away right away. Um, everything she sang from the minute I turned on the mic to when she left was amazing. Also left amazed when Chris played Eva's tape was Chuck Brown, a DC legend in go-go and soul music. I hear this beautiful, mellow voice coming out of this tape, just took me right out on the very beginning. Soon, Chuck and Eva were collaborating, and Chuck says this young white girl was not only inspiring him, but teaching him to sing jazz. We talked and uh, made arrangements to start uh, doing something. We picked a few tunes. Obviously, it was very, very uh, 
uh, stylistic in her own way and uh, very precise on her, her, her uh, tone and her melody. Uh, very melodic, the way she strays away from the melody, comes back to it. And all of this just fascinated me, you know? Of course, I never tried to do none of that. Shy Eva loved singing with Chuck. She could hide behind his showmanship on stage and ride behind his reputation to bigger and better bookings, like Washington's venerated jazz club, Blues Alley. Let's give a big Blues Alley welcome to Miss Eva Cassidy. The club has been here almost 40 years. If she were alive and having this notoriety now, we'd be joking right here at this table about how she would be driving the execs crazy about, uh, move a little more, Eva. Why don't you wear this, Eva? I mean, she wasn't that way and wouldn't have been that way. And uh, I don't know that they would have known what to make of her. You get the feeling of, of just, you know, lighter than air and more, more delicate than chiffon, uh, not the complete picture. Just the opposite. Uh, she was tough, very tough. Uh, tough in her mind and, and tough in her body. You know, she worked for years at a nursery and uh, was extraordinarily strong. Will you stay with me? Eva applied all that toughness and all that stubbornness when it came to selecting her song list says her pianist, Lenny Williams. I know she had to emotionally connect with the lyrics to sing the song. That was a prerequisite. I mean, she had to like it musically, but, but the, a lot of times the message of the song, the lyrics, was the make or break thing. You know, if she didn't really connect with it, she wasn't going to do it. That Eva enjoyed and insisted on singing jazz and pop, folk, and gospel songs drove record companies crazy. I, I can't even remember the record company uh, he came from. Um, he came down and sat there and watched her sing and looked at her and said, uh, what do you want to do? And she looked at him and said, um, oh, pretty much anything. He goes, well, what do you want to do? Tell me the kind of, you know, the style you want to go for. And she goes, pretty much anything but that pop crap. So we never heard from him again. One record company guy who kept coming back was Bruce Lundvall the head of the top jazz label, Blue Note. Uh, I got a call from a fellow, so he brought her to my office, but he didn't have anything to play, so she stood in the middle of the room and sang Amazing Grace. And I, it was just chilling. Amazing was, just, was the right word. Oh, my Lord. Uh, and I said, oh, my God, what, it, you know, what a voice, what an extraordinary voice, you know. And that was the beginning. Lundvall tried pairing Eva with a Philadelphia band, Pieces of a Dream, but the music didn't work. So he asked Eva, what are the songs that work for you? They were all over the place. There was a gospel piece, there was a country song, there was a standard over the rainbow, etc. I said, well, the voice is just spectacular. I mean, but we're a jazz label. Had she been willing to make just a jazz record, we would have done it probably right away without question. But that wasn't her nature. 
Blue Note decided not to offer Eva Cassidy a contract. That I made a mistake, and a serious one, because she was a great, great talent. Lundvall had little time to realize his error. In the spring of 1996, just months after her Blues Alley date had been turned into a CD, Eva started walking with a cane because of persistent pain in her hip. The cause was cancer. She was given just months to live. Bruce Lundvall heard the bad news and called. Her mom let me speak to her. And I asked her to forgive me for not signing her. And I couldn't hold it. I couldn't contain myself. It was one of the most uh, difficult moments I've ever had. And she said, no, no, it's okay. You know, we were together. Eva's friends threw a benefit for her at a club called The Bayou. Her parents, Barbara and Hugh, remember Eva rising to the occasion. And she saw all these people and, uh, you know, they had come out to see her and she was just totally amazed that they would all show up, you know, all of her good friends and uh, so many people donated their services and their talents. And then the honoree moved to the microphone. Well, she made her way up on stage, had some help getting up onto a stool, picked up her guitar, looked out at the people in the audience. The love was all love. Of course, everybody's crying. She announced that she had just taken a huge dose of That's our report for tonight. I'm George Stephanopoulos in Washington. For all of us here at ABC News, Happy New Year and good night. This has been a presentation of ABC News. More Americans get their news from ABC News than from any other source. The most watched entertainment news program in the world. Michael Jackson's new Neverland movie.